at YouTube. Um, let's see. So I'm on, uh, this is day 133, December 1st. So I had surgery on July 20th, 2021. And so yeah, 133 days, 18 weeks, 19 weeks, I lose track. But day 133. Oh boy. So I think the last video I mentioned unrelated to my hernia surgery, but complications are risen from my hernia surgery, constipation, again, sorry, I should have, disclaimer, if you don't want to hear some of this stuff, I'm not going to get too graphic or anything like that, but not maybe why you're here, but again, I had a hiatal hernia surgery, I think that the reduction, of the changes in diet and the reduction of water and all that kind of stuff exacerbated the, my IBS type of symptoms, and it made me constipated, I had to have laxative for forever just to have a bowel movement, um, and uh, constipation, uh, bleeding, things like that, and colonoscopy. Colonoscopy was fine. No uh, le lesions isn't the word. It's escaping me right now. I can't remember the term for what they would look for and take out in a in a colonoscopy or a, uh, in another procedure, maybe thereafter. But they didn't have to do any of that. Everything was fine. They didn't even take a biopsy. Everything was wonderful. So good. Um, just some you know is minor issues. The H word. <laughs> Um, but anyway, I never thought I'd be sharing this stuff on, on YouTube, so sorry. Again, I don't have a script. I just am talking. Um, colonoscopy was fine. Um, then I think it was uh, on November the... Sorry, bear with me. November the 16th or so, I contacted the doctor, my second doctor, the one who did the hiatal hernia surgery, as directed by the other doctor's team and was asking him about what to do next. And he said, let's do another endoscopy, tube down the throat. So again, I did an esophagram in uh, September, early September, I believe, just the x-ray of the stomach. They watched me swallow. They gave you the thing that makes you fizz like pop rocks. You swallow, they're gonna watch you go down, see if you reflux. The esophagram was fine, no evidence of reflux, no, no, nothing was wrong at that time. Again, in September, week eight or nine, something like that, seven, eight, nine, <clears throat> day 21, 28, something like that. And um, again, on uh, the 20, I had the uh, endoscopy again on the 23rd of November. Um, everything was fine. They didn't need to take a biopsy. They could see that I had the the TIF done, the, again, transoral incisionless fund application. They went down the tube. They folded my stomach, created a new valve, pulled the hernia down, um, and fixed everything. Everything was fine. There was no problems. Everything was holding like it was supposed to be. They didn't see, they didn't say anything about inflammation or anything like that. Everything looked fine. Before I even went in for the endoscopy, the doctor, the physician, the surgeon had said, he thought it might be might be a continued symptoms might be a parasympathetic nervous system issue, and essentially a medication to calm my vagus nerve down. I think I'm not the expert at that, and everything he said made sense. But it sounds like my nervous system is kind of on fire and needs to calm down because there's, from what they're telling me, what I understand is there's no medical reason, physically, to illustrate that I have symptoms. So it's more of a nervous mental type of thing. Not nervous system, not a nervousness. Maybe that, that's probably part of it too is anxiety. But he mentioned the vagus nerve and parasympathetic nervous system and you know stuff like that. So I've been taking medication, I think only two days. It's a, actually an antidepressant, but it's supposed to help with that nerve because it controls that nerve that innervates, I think into the spine in the back, obviously in the back of the spine but controls the, the vagus nerve in the gut area. So that's what they're, this is supposed to do, is calm that nerve down. So we'll see, it's only been two days, I'm supposed to take it for two weeks and see how I do. Um, but again, if you ha I, I got ahead of myself, I am still having symptoms. Some days are really good, some days are bad. They're not horrible, but sometimes I feel like they're worse than they were before surgery. Sometimes I feel like they're not so bad. I am able to have, like I mentioned, I think in the last video, I've been able to have tacos and pizza and um, Mountain Dew. I can drink it. Certain, now it's almost, 
certain things are still triggers. Like again, last night we had Qdoba, which I had a chicken salad, which had some picante ranch dressing. The chicken's obviously cooked in some sort of spicy sauce of some sort. Um, pico de gallo, you know, tomatoes, that was a trigger. Onions seemed to be a trigger, it seemed like in the past. And then I had a couple, five to 15 chips with a little bit of salsa on them. And an hour and a half, two hours later, started feeling nauseous. It wasn't so bad, but it was still, again, when you start feeling nauseous all the time, it's just, it's hard to focus on anything else for me, just when you feel nauseous. Again, if heartburn, like, oh, I shouldn't have had that, uh, you know, and it just, <clears throat> excuse me. But I get nauseous. I have been able to drink more water lately. I've mentioned in the previous videos I was unable to drink water by itself because it just tasted just the most awful, disgusting thing I've, oh, horrible, like soap, sour. So that's some of the worst symptoms, and those were the symptoms initially. Water brash or, or hyper salivation, extreme saliva in my mouth to the point where I spit in something like I'm chewing tobacco and I don't. The extra saliva and phlegm and stuff like that got so much I'd spit in a cup. <clears throat> um, I don't have to do that really very much anymore. This is a precaution. Um, I, but that's gotten better of late, coincidentally. And then um, the water, bra the water, sour water taste has gotten better. I'm able to drink water. Um, sometimes I get a sour taste, but it's manageable, I guess. Um, still, I mean, I had surgery because I wanted to be. I want to go get a drink of water. I fill up my cup, put some ice or whatever, and I drink water, and I don't even think about it. I don't want to think about it. I still have to think about it a little bit, but it's getting better. So maybe that's a positive. Maybe it is just taking some time for this to heal. Because even before the endoscopy, or excuse me, right after the, I talked to the doctor, that was a week later I had the endoscopy, I was still feeling better. I was able to start drinking water. And not have to have crystal light or Mio in it or whatever. So, but it's awful to just not have to be able to drink water. And then even some foods were tasting bad. It was just like food didn't taste normal. And it didn't matter what it was. It could have been a, I don't know, a chicken breast or a vegan chicken nugget or, you know, apple, carrots, green beans. Just did, just tasted off. But it's getting a little bit better. I don't think I'm still, I'm not to the, I'm not normal like a normal person would be where they just, never have to think about it and all they get is heartburn they pop a roll age tums whatever and then they're fine but it is better i have more of a gap i think some days i get really down like but again yesterday i knew what did it i had qdoba i did it to myself but i have had some pretty good days um some days i have more phlegm than others so am i still getting better i don't know um will this medication make all the symptoms go away or again i would just like to have can I just have a symptom once a week? Because I've, I've read this before, and maybe you have too, that when it affects your quality of life and you notice every single day, that's where there's, you know, they become a problem. And the, he asked me, how often do you notice symptoms? Is it a couple times a week? I said, no, it's usually it's rare that I go a day without them. And most of the time, when it's really bad, it's a half hour out of every hour I'm in, I'm suffering. On a good day, it might be two minutes out of every hour. I'll take that. But again, I'm like, uh, you know, or, uh, my throat burns, ass, you know, not just acid, regurgitation, but water brush, nausea, sour water. You know, two minutes out of every hour is not bad. But again, it starts to add up when that two minutes starts to get longer or again, two minutes every, out of every hour for the last year and a half has just been hard to take. So anyway, those are all my symptoms. I, they, they persist, but they're getting a little bit better, I think. I'm trying to be more optimistic. Um, in some cases, I think they're maybe have worsened, but of late, within the last week or two, I felt better for whatever reason. I'm able to eat anything I want, but again, certain things bother me. I did uh, the day, excuse me, the day after Thanksgiving, which was a Friday, of course, I had a green chili burrito for the first time and it made me sick. To, I got nauseous. I got nauseous and had throat burn. And it wasn't just that Friday night. That Friday night, I was pretty nauseous the rest of the night. I did Tums, I did a Pepsid, I did as much as I could do without like, you're gonna overdose. I don't know what would happen if you did overdose on that stuff, but um, 
again, I followed the directions and I still was pretty miserable into the next day. It wasn't until, again, almost 24 hours later that I felt better. So when I get those symptoms, they last forever. They just don't seem to go away. So I have to, you know, what, what was it? Did I, I had chips and salsa as well, a little bit. Not like I normally would, because I just, I eat and eat and eat. And I'm not a big guy, but I like to eat when I like to eat and I like spicy food. Just can't do it anymore, a lot like that anyway. And even that, maybe it was that food, because I have had pizza. I have had hamburgers, greasy. I've had greasy fries. And I eat healthy. I just do that on cheat days, you know, to each their own. That's what I do. And that, you know, I eat healthy. I eat vegan hamburgers still, because I like them. And I have uh, whole wheat bagels, uh, peanut butter and jelly. I have eggs and oatmeal, and I have a lot of protein shakes. That's how I put on a lot more of the weight that I wanted to get back back on. Gained 20 pounds since my lowest weight. So it was 140, and now I'm at 160, 161, something like that. So which has made me very happy. It was mentally debilitating. I couldn't do it physically, and then mentally that was so hard being so skinny. It's just I, I've always been picked on because I was so skinny, and I don't want to be skinny. I know that's a maybe that's a good problem to have, but for me mentally, it was no different than being 80, 90, 100, 200, 300 pounds overweight. For me, being 20 pounds too skinny was mentally hard for me. So no offense to anybody that's overweight, and that so you should have that. For me, everybody's different. I'm different. I I've always been picked on. You know, my brother was bigger than I was. And they call this tree trunk and twigs. So, and I didn't know until recently, actually. And that still hurts. It's like, man, I, I, I'm the smallest of my family members. All my cousins are huge, taller people, bigger. Not that they're all overweight or anything like that, but they're just big and I'm small. I'm smaller compared to them. And, you know, I just always had a problem with that mentally. So anyway, um, you know, I just, that was hard for me to lose that much weight when I didn't want to, but I had no choice. So I was able to put that back on. But uh, anyway, protein shakes, um, I have tuna fish and uh, green beans and <clears throat> broccoli and salads and um, uh, you know pork chops and chick grilled chicken breast and I, I eat pretty healthy. I have red meat, but not too much. Um, sometimes we'll have a hamburger, but it's usually lean, the leanest you can get. My wife hates the the bad stuff anyway. So I can eat. I eat pretty healthy. <clears throat> just every Friday, give or take. I have a cheat meal where I'll have donuts or one other Friday I'll have pizza with my family. We'll go out. We'll, we don't go out. I don't choose to go out with the pandemic. I stay home um, as much as I can. We bring food home. We haven't eaten in a restaurant in almost two years now, probably. So, yeah, um, I haven't. My wife has. I disagree with her, but if she was standing right there, I would tell her. I told her last night, I think you're nuts, but it's just not worth it. But in any case, that's a different story. Um... I can eat what I want, but again, there are certain triggers that get me. But are they as bad as before the surgery? I don't know. It's hard to say. I, it's, I've been living with this for such a long time, and maybe it's just becoming normal. But again, I can go get Taco Bell, and I can have that. And I would prepare by having, like, Gaviscon seems to coat, <clears throat> coat my throat, coat my stomach a little bit more because of the liquid. That's what my doctor said, one of the doctors, not even the gastro doctor. Funny how the general primary care doc said Gaviscon, and the two expert gastroenterologists never said anything about Gaviscon liquid. Old school in that it coats the stomach and something, and I don't know what's, I don't pay attention. All I know that it seems to, seems to help sometimes. Other times might not, but it does seem to do the trick, and I prepare. I have that before I have Taco Bell or before I have a burrito. I did the same thing with the green chili burrito though and it didn't work. So it depends on the food maybe. I don't know. Um, but uh, anyhow, that's what happened. I had the endoscopy. Nothing's wrong though. So it's a nervous system issue. So they're trying to calm that nerve down. Maybe I need to work more. I probably know I need to work more on meditation and calming and looking up videos on YouTube on calming the vagus nerve. Even before surgery, I remember seeing that and the relation to the gut. I just never did anything about it. So I haven't done that. But um, some people have mentioned, hey, do you cut out milk? And I really don't drink milk I don't, or dairy, excuse me. I don't eat cheese ever. i just not a cheese person. I have a protein shake that has milk in it. I have one, and that's usually one a day, maybe three, four times a week. The other shakes, protein shakes I have, don't have milk in them. They have milk ingredients, whatever that means. But it's not a, I mean, it, you don't even have to refrigerate it. I, Amazon delivers it to my door and 
sits there. It doesn't have to be refrigerated unless it's opened. I can't remember. Is it muscle milk, paper cartons, kind of square, um, kind of shape? Anyway, um, that's all the dairy I have. I'm trying to think of other dairy. I don't have cottage cheese. I don't drink. I don't have dairy. So that, for me, isn't a trigger or was a cause unless it's those protein shakes that are continuing to exacerbate me. But when I have them and I have good days, I've had three of them. And it doesn't bother me. When I drink them, it doesn't bother me. Afterwards, it doesn't bother me. Hours and hours after, it doesn't bother me. I'll have one at 8 p.m. That's how I put on weight again. I was having an extra protein shake, and um, it was uh, it didn't bother me. Able to sleep, no problem, no symptoms, nothing. So I just don't – I wish it was that simple. I wish it was just the, the dairy products or the milk for me, and it's just not. So I wish I had you know more good news to tell you, but for me, the surgery was – I don't, I don't want to say it was unsuccessful, but I don't want to say that it was, it's not successful because, again, I thought that if I was symptomatic every day, could I at least be symptomatic just one day a week? I can tolerate that even all day. Um, so uh, I, don't, I don't know. Um, I think that I'm a rare case. I still think that I would encourage people to if you're suffering and they've doctor ask questions ask so many questions and no matter what they tell you and if they're annoyed and roll their eyes at you then go see a different doctor ask as many questions as you can understand what's going to happen Um, i know i know none of you out there and i'm not doing this for anybody other than to help anybody out there that needs help and just wants to hear somebody that because i've i've seen more good stories than bad on youtube here's my bad story or the bad story. Maybe it's not bad, but it's not not 100% good. You know, had the surgery. Yeah, I'm back to normal. Not how this went for me. <clears throat> Been quite a struggle. And I know it's still. I, I I have have it easy compared to people, other people, with GERD or other issues, cancer, you name it. I have no problems. Um, I have IBS, and that maybe exacerbates things. But they haven't addressed that. You know, maybe do I take an IBS-related medication? Does that help with my symptoms? They said the gallbladder they don't think is related because I have had gallbladder sludge. They don't think that's related. So be it. They're the experts. So I'm trying that medication as prescribed, but there's nothing wrong with my stomach. The tip was successful. Everything held. There's hernia is not there. Everything's fine. I don't have a hernia in my stomach anymore. So... Everything's fine. Why do I have symptoms? So that's what he's pointing to, is that parasympathetic nervous system and the vagus nerve is my guess. And he mentioned that specifically. And again, I don't remember exactly what he said because he wasn't overly technical, but there was just a lot, a lot of information within a three to five minute period that I talked to the surgeon about right before the endoscopy, which I was nervous about to begin with, as I just getting used to going under anesthesia, but it's not still something I want to do. So that's what I'm trying, the medication. Um, again, I've only taken it two nights, uh, Monday and Tuesday night. So take it for two weeks, and then I can't remember what it's called, amitriptyline or something maybe. It started with an A. But I guess, it's, again, it's an antidepressant, but it's a low, low dose, and it's used for pain, I guess. So I don't think it's, a, it's, it's something I need to be on forever. Um, again, start off small, increase the dosage in two weeks, and then I think I could go off of it at some point. just depends on how I feel. So in a month or so, give or take maybe uh, 26 more days, I'll follow up with the doctor and see where I am. So hopefully I'll have another update for you at that time. But uh, I still i am able to do a couple things. I'm able to have Mountain Dew. I'm able to have tacos. I'm able to have pizza with a few problems. I still have issues but at least I feel like I can enjoy the things I want to enjoy occasionally. That's what I wanted. So I guess if this is the way my life is, and I, I, and I did, I could go to Thanksgiving and I didn't have to take food with me. I had turkey, I had mashed potatoes, I couldn't have the salt, or I, I could have, I, I can. I chose not to have the salsa because I was worried about it being causing me symptoms. So I didn't, but because my family would you know, take some salsa and put it on top of uh, the turkey instead of gravy or something like that, give it a little bit of a kick. But I didn't do that. So I just really had mashed potatoes and chicken. But I could have had stuffing. I could have had cranberries. I just don't like that. 
um, cookies, whatever else was there. I just had turkey and mashed potatoes and gravy, essentially bread. I can have butter. I couldn't have butter before. That would make me nauseous. So I can have those things and not be just like terrified and not have a problem at all. Um, well, how do I say it? Excuse me. Some things will cause me some symptoms, but again, roll a Tums. I don't take Pepsid every day. I don't take a medication for this at all, other than this one for the nervous system. I don't take Pepsid. I don't take a PPI. I don't want to take a PPI to each their own. I don't want to. I understand that it can cause, of course, if you look it up, issues with, uh, what is it? Is it arthritis, osteo? I can't remember. I think it's, um, uh, is it osteoporitis and, uh, is it a magnesium deficiency, calcium deficiency, I think, and then osteoporosis, worst case scenario, especially long term, um, I think, and then also, um, increasing your risk for community acquired pneumonia, if I recall, which of course we've got a pretty bad respiratory issue going on right now in the world. So my opinion, why risk it? Especially if I don't need it and I can have a Tums or a Roll Aids or Gaviscon, something like that. Um, Pepsid, I can take occasionally. And when I've had a really bad symptomatic night, I'm like, God, I just can't take it. I'll take a Pepsid and it seems to kind of help. And I have anti nausea pills, but I just don't want to take those because there's side effects on those two that I don't like, I won't get into. But I haven't had to take it. It's just not been bad enough where I feel like, oh, I'm going to go throw up. It's just that lingering nausea. I'm like, oh my God. <clears throat> so I just, I power through. So um, again, I'm almost talking to myself into saying that maybe the surgery did help a little bit and I still have issues, but I'm at least able to feel more normal, go to family gatherings and not have to take a vegan chicken patty, vegan burger, apples, uh, you know, uh, green beans and well while everybody else is not on thanksgiving but fourth of july hamburgers hot dogs chips t- traditional i'd say for fourth of july um i think anyway um and i've gone to i've gone to some events like that in the past where i good thing i brought something because there was nothing absolutely nothing there that i could eat that would fill me up i mean you could have carrots and carrot sticks and celery sticks and stuff like that for appetizers but sometimes that's not even there it's just chips hot dogs and hamburgers essentially so i don't have to i could eat a hamburger i could go and eat a hot dog i haven't tried a hot dog and hot dogs have caused me acid in the past but i think i could i could go and have a hamburger and have pickles and ketchup and mustard on it and everything and i'd be okay i in some cases i might not even need to take a roll aids with me i usually historically i'd taken a roll aids or a tums or something like that in my pocket to work just in case uh, cough drops to help with the burning in the throat, which, by the way, cough drops have been very helpful for me with that. Um, keeping it moist as much as possible feels dry and cut and burning, <clears throat> but uh, I don't have to think about it as much anymore. The other day I forgot. I was like, oh, I didn't bring my roll aids. Good. I don't want to think about it. I just want to live and just go do what I'm going to do. I don't want to think about, oh, is this water going to taste sour today? Uh, and it hasn't. So... Maybe that's a positive. Uh, it is a positive. So that's all I think I have. Um, I know I talk for a long time and I talk in circles. Again, I don't have a script. I should, and I could have probably covered a lot of this in 10 minutes, but I keep going on and on. So if you're sticking with me, again, I keep saying this too in every video. Um, thank you. And I, again, I'm not for me. Um, maybe it helps me to vent too. Um, even though I'm not talking to you, I am talking to you, I guess. If you're listening i maybe this helps maybe it doesn't and maybe you keep thinking about other options before you go the surgery route i don't know um, i think i exhausted those options pretty thoroughly but i don't know what else was there i did you know and i didn't want to do a ton of research to try to find non-surgical options because i felt like it was a second job at a point um, i wish the doctors would tell you more about that stuff but maybe you need a different doctor go to the what is it a do instead of an md that can tell you some of the other options to to explore whereas the mds are probably just going to tell you medicine surgery medicine surgery medicine surgery so hopefully that helps and again if send me a comment i might not respond right away and if i forget send me another one um and i'll i'll respond and um 
I don't know how it works with YouTube and direct messages, um, but if you wanted to communicate with me via email or you know sharing like a phone number or something, I'm happy to talk to you over the phone too, um, if I can help in any way, because this has been, this year and a half has been very, very physically hard, and, and of course, maybe more so mentally hard to deal with all these things. So if I can help in some way, I'm, even if it's just to talk and hear what you have to say and get my advice on certain things. I mean, I have some experience with it now and it's been going on for quite some time. Not as long as somebody that's been dealing with it for you know, 10, 20 years, but um, I've got a lot of experience with this in a short period of time, a lot of information. So, And I'll keep posting as I have more updates, but uh, I don't think I'll have one for a while. Um, there's nothing else they can do now um, other than try this, like I said, antidepressant medication on me and we'll see from there. And then if I can't get a solution, you know, do I go get another opinion? Do I drive down south where my main city is? Do I fly to California or somewhere to see a specialist there that is a leader in gastro symptoms um, across the country? I don't know. We'll see, but I doubt it. So that's all I have for you. Have a good one uh, out there, YouTube.